What's good, YouTube? Christmas Innovation here. Bring guys another Q and A weekend. This is the third Q and A weekend I'm bringing you guys. So, without further ado, let's begin. Starting off with Kat Sunik. Do you think new spell and trap cards need to be released in order to keep up with the meta? Do you think the current spell and trap cards are not keeping up, except floodgates? Let me think. I think with the way the OCG has been going since every deck is pretty much spell, 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 spell little to no traps and like OTK heavy, that's plausible. I mean, only spell and trap cards that everyone has that really is keeping up is Breakthrough Skills, Phoenix Chains, Skill Drain, um, Vanity, but I guess that you can consider that a floodgate. And then post this current format we're in it now, when the Yo Synergy come out, they have their own version of Solemn Judgment, which is really good. So, I guess it all boils down to what kind of spell attack cards could re we could release that will be balanced for the game. Um, I personally think that spell attack cards we have now, we do need some new re-envision and spell and traps. Great examples of re-envision is cards like Ghost of a Grudge, where it was a good card. If you guys don't know what Ghost of the Grudge does, it basically, I think if you have 10 or more cards in the graveyard, or your opponent has 10 or more cards in the graveyard, your opponent holds it, field goes down to zero attack power, permanently, so. Then we need more cards like that that can, can, that can try to keep up with the meta. Something different, to try to linger away from effect negation. But we also have to make cards like that with better cost. Ghost of the Grudge have, had a high cost, which is why I said, saw no play. And you have to have cards balance out to have costs where it's like it's balanced but it's good. It can't and it's not too overpowered. So yeah. I definitely think we do need no more traps to answer your, answer your question in a simplified version. You geek gree. Yeah, you gree I hope I'm saying it right. Who wins? Burning Abyss or Necros? I'm gonna have to side with Necros on this one. Um Burning Abyss, they just set up the field to make Dante and sit on fire like necros they is all once again spell heavy deck little or no back row so your opponent's not gonna really be plussing off fire like that like they will be for number one number two trishula is a card so while your opponent's sitting on dante with a little bit of back row you can trishula your opponent banish the burning abyss monster on the field banish one in the graveyard banish one in the hand and you could still pretty much OTK. Like, I don't know all the combos in Necros. I only played it for a short period of time. But I have saw the potential with that deck. So I think they can pretty much win. And then going to game two and three, we do have Necros do have Shadow Mirrors. So it's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. I mean, BA does have a lot of cards, too. They have the Vanity. They have the Vanity. They have the Phoenix Wing Wing Blast. So the matches would be interesting. But if I was to side with one, I'll side with Necros based on the fact that Necros does have. Shadow on Prison of Mirror. But then again, one could also argue Burning of this has Manities. I'm going to go with Necros because OCG rules. But yeah. Antonio Virgil asks, should I pick up Infernoids? Now, Infernoids is a deck from my personal playtesting against it that just, every deck can special some of it, every deck has a monster that can special some of itself out. The deck is based around milling to the cards of the graveyard and gaining massive field advantage. I haven't seen deck run, run out of back row, so it's one of those decks that can just spit out their whole hand and OTK you in one turn. Or that's what it seems like it's trying to do. Um, if you can break the deck, yeah. I think if you have a good idea with any deck, you should, you should play it. And I don't think the deck is getting a lot of hype, so it should be pretty much dirt cheap. So, yeah. I don't see why you shouldn't pick up Infernoids. Now, if you're asking if you pick it up for competitive play, um, it's kind of iffy because the deck kind of does this auto lose Vanity's Infinite. So, if you can find a way around Vanity's Infinite, you'd be good to go, sir. Chase Boatwright asks, What do I think of the new Burning Abyss support and Secrets of Challengers, whatever that set's called? I think a lot of it's really good. They have the new 1500 guy. And I didn't really read the Ritual Monster that much. Like, I haven't really studied you that often. But apparently all the stuff is really good. Matter of fact, one second. I'm going to look it up right now. All right, guys. And 
thoughts on it since I haven't studied it right now. First impressions, it's really good. The one guy that banishes card monster on the field into the end phase when he's into the graveyard is really powerful. The rituals, yeah, but I think the ritual gets its effect when he's used as a cost with like wing blast or something. And I remember the ritual spell doing something when it goes to the graveyard too. So with all that being said, I think the supporters are really good. I hope Burning Abyss don't get no more new support. The deck is already, it came out good, and it's like Konami's just pushing more and more and more into the deck. I think it's pretty obvious at this point the deck might get fusions and etc. So don't be surprised if you guys don't see a um, shut off fusion version of Burning Abyss. But yeah, I think the um, new support is really good. Nothing more to be said about that one, honestly. It just retarded that this deck keeps getting support when it's already tier 1. Cat Sunic also asks, do I think Floodgates are healthy for the game? Example, what do you think of Vanity, Skilder, and etc.? I think Floodgates are healthy for the game because some decks, of, especially the way the game is played now, are just overpowered, and Floodgates help keep those decks in check. The only problem is, though, that since decks are overpowered, and you, you only have an out, which is your one Floodgate. If you don't get a Floodgate, you're pretty much going to lose if you have a bad matchup. Now, with that being said, I think Konami well, needs to take a step further and make decks already have main deck outs to other decks. Like, BA has... Well, I guess they kind of already do it now with BA being inherently good against Cleese. Cleese being inherently good against Shadow. Shadow being inherently good against BA. So, I think more variety of decks need to do that to make the game more balanced. I think the Floodgates would be the key factor in winning the game. So, yeah, Floodgates are healthy for the game, in my personal opinion. I think some of them, like Skill Drain, need to get toned down a lot. Um, Rido14 asks, what do you think of Silver Sentinel for decks that don't put too much back row? Silver Sentinel was a card that I liked back in the old days. I used to recite it in my gadget deck about three years ago, back in the, the hero format when heroes were really popular. The only problem is you can only get its effect, I think, on your turn. I'm not sure. Let me look him up real quick again. So... I have my computer right here in my lap. Sentinel. I remember it was a, um, I used to cite it this card, and I took it on my site for a specific reason, because it was the way the card was worded. Come on, here up and load, computer. Takes, during the end phase of turn, the card is set to destroy the great bear, take one card. Okay, so basically the reason why this card wasn't that good because when it's destroyed, you have to target one card your opponent controls if possible. Then you special summon from the graveyard if you destroy that target. So basically, like, when your opponent MST, he targets a card. If your opponent gets rid of it, you don't end phase. So let's say, for example, they MST Silver Sentinel. He dies. You target their, let's say, Dante. That's a bad example. Let's just say, for good gracious, they you target Dante. Okay, now Dante overlays into that one rank four girl. I forgot her name. And so since Dante ranked up into that that, that rank four girl, why can't I think of her name right now? Anyway, since your target is gone, you can't use Silver Sense of Effect because you have to special summon him and destroy the target. So with that being said, Silver Sense of is a bad card because there's so many ways to out it. Now, you know, back in the day, it was good, but now it's just kind of a little too slow. And last, Zachary Sykes asks, what is my favorite type of deck to play? Well, actually, that's not last. I have one more comment from Slate Warrior. Slate Warrior, I don't know what's wrong with my computer, but every time you comment on my videos, it says that your comments are marked as spam. Don't know why, but you need to fix that. Because I know it's not my computer, it's yours. So Zachary Sykes asks, what is my favorite type of deck to play? I like playing combo. Well, not combo. I like playing decks that have a little bit of everything to it. It can combo. It could have defense. It can have offense. I guess a great example of that will be Burning Abyss. Like, if I was, if I played meta, Burning Abyss would definitely be my favorite type of deck to play. It has a little bit of everything. It has great defense. It has great offense. It's well-rounded. I like playing well-rounded decks. Now, mind you, for the past year and a half, I played a combo deck, which was Chain Gadgets. But that was the only reason I did that is because it was something I invented. Well, I didn't invent it, but I helped re, re innovate it. That's a different story. But as far as decks in general, I love playing well rounded decks. 
Another great example of this would be three years ago when I first got back from Yu-Gi-Oh! And I played Wind-Ups. Wind-Ups was a retardedly well-rounded deck. It had offense, defense, it had combos. It just had a little bit of everything. So, yeah, well-rounded for the win. And last but not least, finally, Slate Warrior asked, What is your opinion of Patrick Hobbit? What are some of your favorite cartoons from your childhood? Which generation of Pokemon was the best, okay? Dawson Patrick Hobbit. I think he's a good player. Never received a lot of crap. Um, I haven't met him personally. I've seen him at events. Never spoke to him. But he seems like a pretty humble dude. I don't know. People who said they spoke to him said he was kind of a dickhead. But at the same time, from my pro, I guess pro days in Naruto, sometimes people take things a little too offensive. Like you have to realize, like if you're a big, if you're if you're a name player in a game, you're gonna have a people coming to you all day long. Now. You only have so much energy to give out that's positive. Not for example, say I'm a UV Silver and my channel is getting somewhat popular. A thousand and one, and let's say it's all, I mean, all 700 of you guys in the event. I'm guarantee you at least one of you guys will say Chris was an asshole or a dick. Now, that's based on the fact that, you know, some of y'all might say, hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm like, I'm cool. How you doing? Whatever. Shake hands. Part our ways. And then, you know, some of you guys might see me. I might be in a bad mood, you know, life happens, personal life, you do have a personal life, things do bug you, you might feel like you got cheated the last round, you might not feel like you're even talking, like, everyone's not perfect, sometimes you just wake up and feel like, man, I don't feel like being bothered today, I know I do that all the time, like, sometimes I wake up, go I go outside, go to the gym, and just don't want to talk to nobody, I just want to zone out and be within myself, so with all the man said, I don't know, Hoban, but I think he's a pretty chill dude. I respect him as a player. And anyone saying he's an asshole, I say at least, at, at least get to try to know the dude first, if you can, before you make judgment on him or anybody for that matter, because somebody might have just had a bad day. You can never know. Favorite childhood cartoons? Um, pfft, I'm an anime head, so obviously Yu Gi Oh! was one of them. Pokemon, Cubics, there's tons of them. Samurai D for Kyo. I guess I was in high school when that came out. That's an anime, by the way. Um, fuck, I'm not going to name everything. Like, that's coming to mind. Death Note, for you guys to follow me on. On Dueling Network, my name is Lord underscore Kira. Um, Code Geass. Pokemon, I think I said Pokemon already. Um, it's always... Ah. Mummy's Alive, Mega Man. It's a ton of them. <laughs> it's too many to name, but yeah, pretty much everything from Cartoon Network, Fox Kids, all that stuff I pretty much watched as a kid. Dexter's Laboratory. But yeah, pretty much everything from cable TV to regular TV to anything I watched as a kid and enjoyed. So yeah, pretty much to say all the boy shows I pretty much watched as a kid. Anime is included too. And obviously DBZ. Which generation of Pokemon was the best? Um, if I was to say which generation was the best, first thing that comes to mind was the second generation. Because the originals were cool, but at the same time, it was like, they were kind of dry, in my personal opinion. Like, I've been watching Pokemon since I was seven years old, and I'm, I kind of lost track of it, but the second generation, I remember being kick-ass. Like, it was an episode of Pokemon I specifically remember when Ash, before the second generation was released, and Ash was in a Pokemon League, and Charizard was whooping ass, and then he met that dude from a different region who had Blaziken, and he Blaze kicked the fuck out of Charizard and pretty much OTK the best. Funniest shit ever. You guys, you guys should look that up. <laughs> That's what's looking up. Charizard, what? Blaze kick. Shout out guys. But yeah. So I guess I have to say second generation. I love Blades again as a Pokemon. Yeah, that was second generation, right? Was it? Let me see. <laughs> you, as you get older, let me see. Yeah, I think Torchic. No, actually, no, that was that was third generation. Third, second, third, second. Uh, Cause I think Blaziken, 
Blaze it can third. Okay, yeah, Blaze it can third generation. So I'll definitely have to go with Cyndaquil. I remember Cyndaquil was second generation. So yeah, third generation was my favorite because Blaze it can was a beast. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's Q and A. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share support. It's always comment down in the comments below. Questions you'd like to ask me for next week's Q and A? I want to I'm going to think because it is really fun, especially with questions like that. Slate like words just gave me. Yeah, keep it. You can keep it outside of Yu-Gi-Oh. I really don't care. Everything don't have to be Yu-Gi-Oh specific. It can be real life, personal life, whatever. You, hell, you can even ask me for advice. I I like helping, so I think I can give out pretty much a good solid advice. So the other man said, this is Christmas Team Innovation, signing out. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And of course, my little gay speech. I do this all because I help. I truly believe in helping you guys become better players. I truly believe you guys help me become better players. So, once again, Christmas Team Innovation, signing out. Rate, comment, and subscribe.